Pete is a struggling travel writer who's currently working on an article on Australia's Northern Territories. After getting off a bus on a highway, he drops by a roadside cafe. This cafe is decorated with preserved animals, newspaper clippings, and photographs of vicious crocodile attacks. Shortly after, Pete boards a travel boat accompanied by other tourists on a crocodile-watching river cruise. Leading the group is Kate, a lively and cheerful tour guide who humorously warns them that they only get one chance to complain about the scorching heat and bothersome flies. The other tourists include Elizabeth and Alan, a married couple with their teenage daughter, Sherry. An American couple named Mary Ellen and Everett. Three individuals named Simon, Gwen and Russell. And finally, Kate's dog, Kevin. And after a brief chat, they set off on their journey through the river. As they pass through the shallow water, Kate briefly informs the group that the river they are in right now is a tidal system and is home to the largest population of saltwater crocodiles. Among them dwells a particularly enormous and perilous crocodile known to devour both humans and animals. It seems that this predator has the ability to swim beneath the water's surface without causing any ripples, and it can quickly emerge to launch an attack with incredible speed. However, this crocodile does not swallow its prey in one go, but rather tears it into smaller pieces before consuming it. Upon hearing this, some of the travelers get frightened, so to ease their concerns, Kate assures them that they are totally safe inside the boat. Along their journey, they encounter numerous crocodiles, but none of them are significant size. The travelers are somewhat relieved, and also they're beyond the danger zone. The cruise continues moving towards their destination, until Neil and Colin, two of Kate's friends, approach them. The two reveal themselves to be the guests and then slam their speedboat into their cruise boat. Moreover, they're somewhat aggressive and intimidate the tourists, refusing to leave, even after being asked by everyone. But a few moments later, the boys eventually leave, and Kate prepares to return the group to base. Later, Everett takes out his video camera and starts filming the canyons when suddenly he spots a flare in the distance. Unsure if he's the only one who saw it, Everett rewinds the tape on his camera, and then the other tourists see another flare go up. Immediately, Kate tries to radio the base but cannot reach them as the radio reception is poor. Thus, she tells the group that they must investigate the flares to determine whether someone is in distress. A few miles upriver, Kate and the group come across a half-sunken boat that has either crashed or collided with something. They then cautiously make their way through the muddy terrain, fully aware that it currently serves as the dwelling place for a ferocious crocodile. Believing they're safe on the boat, they continue their journey as dusk approaches. Suddenly, the group stumbles upon an empty boat with no signs of human or animal presence nearby. However, the boat is attacked by something, causing it to sink without a trace. Kate then realizes that they have entered the territory of the crocodile indicating that their safety in this area is far from guaranteed. She then starts to reverse the boat. Just then, it is abruptly attacked from below, resulting in damage and a crack that allows water to seep in. But Kate skillfully steers the boat to the pool's edge, and everyone manages to leave the boat safely. Upon closer inspection, Kate discovers that the radio has also been damaged, leaving them without any means to seek help. However, she assures the group that if they don't return as scheduled, her father will send a search party to find them. At that moment, Russell draws attention to the fact that the river is tidal and explains that the island they are on will be completely submerged within a few hours. He urgently advises everyone to make their way to the mainland and return with help. While Everett struggles to stop Russell from leaving, Simon silences them as he manages to catch something on the radio. Tragically, Everett vanishes without a trace, leaving behind only a ripple in the water as they turn around. As they peer into the water, their eyes catch only a fleeting glimpse of the crocodile's tail, disappearing swiftly into the depths. The sight fills them with an unsettling realization that the crocodile will strike once more, taking advantage of their vulnerable state within its territory. Following this, Kate quickly asks the group to climb to the highest place in front of them. Meanwhile, nobody manages to receive any phone signal, leading them to alternate holding up the radio. Meanwhile, Kate scours the boat for provisions, and Pete inquires about the time frame for the incoming tide, whether it will occur within hours or minutes. 
However, Kate highlights that given the presence of a hostile crocodile, the rising tide is the least of their concerns. She clarifies that the imminent darkness poses a greater threat as they require light to navigate, whereas the crocodile thrives even in the absence of light. Just then, Neil and Colin arrive with their boats, and Kate warns them about the killer crocodile. However, before they can react, a crocodile suddenly attacks, causing the boat to overturn. Somehow, Neil manages to save himself and escape from the water, while Colin falls victim to the menacing crocodile. As the darkness sets in, the muddy area becomes increasingly flooded. Moreover, the ferocious crocodile also mysteriously disappears, adding to the growing sense of danger. Realizing the situation they are in, Neil warns that staying in one place poses a grave threat, and they would inevitably become the lurking crocodile's prey, one by one. Proposing a plan, he decides to swim to the highest point while holding onto a rope. Once there, he will securely fasten the rope to a sturdy tree, enabling everyone to reach the elevated spot using this lifeline. Although the plan carries its own risks, it is their only viable option, compelling everyone to unanimously support Neil and follow his lead. With determination, he swims towards the elevated area and successfully fastens the rope to a massive tree, creating a means for all of them to reach safety. Following this, the rest of the group moves forward relying on a rope for support, while Neil keeps an eye on their progress. Suddenly, he hears a voice that grabs his attention, but before he can even process it, a crocodile launches a surprise attack resulting in his unfortunate demise. On the other hand, the brutality of the attack causes a nearby tree to topple, causing everyone to fall into the water. They then quickly swim back to Kate who stands at a distance from the pool along with the others, while everyone else maintains a safe distance from the pool. Alan stands on edge, unaware of the imminent danger. The crocodile strikes again, flinging him into the water, and despite his desperate pleas for help, no one comes to his rescue, and he too becomes a villain of the crocodile's violent attack. Meanwhile, fear sweeps through the rest of the group as they witness Alan succumbing to the predator. As the water level rises, Pete realizes that the crocodile intends to target them individually. So to ensure their safety, he suggests diverting the creature's attention. By creating a distraction, they retrieve a lifeless duck from Kate's boat, securely attach it to a hook, and toss the bait into the pool. With this, the group collectively decides to retreat to a higher location once the crocodile begins feasting on the decoy ducks. Soon after, they successfully divert its attention, employing the last desperate measure to save their lives. The plan unfolds seamlessly as Pete securely fastens a sturdy rope to a nearby tree. Suddenly, the crocodile appears and starts devouring the ducks, unknowingly falling into their trap. And seizing the opportunity, Kate and the others cautiously move forward. Eventually, the colossal crocodile breaks loose from its bindings and once again disappears. Meanwhile, everyone else successfully reaches higher ground, except for Kate, who remains submerged in the water. Pete notices the crocodile closing in on Kate, but he's too late to give her a warning. With desperation, Kate attempts to emerge from the water, but unfortunately, she fails to do so in time. Tragically, the crocodile swiftly lunges at her and spins into a death roll, inflicting severe injuries before snatching her away. Pete plunges into the water, frantically searching for Kate, but as quickly as it appeared, the crocodile vanishes along with Kate. While searching, he spots Kate's dog Kevin nearby and decides to pursue it. As he follows the dog, he stumbles upon a massive tree with a hole at its base, leading to a hidden cave. However, Kevin is nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, Pete hears faint echoes of the dog's barks coming from the cave and calls out to him from outside. But just as he turns to leave, he slips and falls deeper into the enormous cave hidden within the tree, landing in a pool of water. Holding his flashlight, Pete illuminates the surroundings and notices an object floating in the water, and to his horror, he realizes that it's Neil's brutally deformed torso, which sends shivers down his spine. 
Overwhelmed by fear, he continues to venture further into the cave, only to discover that it serves as the dwelling of a crocodile, a place where it brings its prey to store them. Reluctantly, Pete climbs deeper into the lair and eventually finds Kevin sitting near some trees. As he approaches, he realizes that Kevin has actually discovered Kate, who is gravely injured with chunks missing from her legs and arms. Her life jacket is barely keeping her insides intact, but miraculously, she's still alive and breathing. Shortly after, Pete hears a crocodile approach the cave from a distance and frantically searches for a hiding spot. Eventually, he discovers a concealed area behind a tangle of tree roots and manages to lift Kate up to safety before pulling himself up as well. To his dismay, Pete notices that the crocodile has captured Kate's dog in its jaws, leading to the unfortunate demise of the poor animal. Following this, the crocodile proceeds to devour Kate's dog and then dozes off for a while. Pete remains seated carefully, assessing the situation and waiting for a clear sign that the crocodile is indeed asleep and poses no threat. Once he's confident of this, Pete guides Kate out of the cave with the exit conveniently located right before their eyes. However, as he attempts to reach the entrance while carrying Kate, his attention is suddenly drawn to a noise, and as he looks towards the source, Pete realizes that the crocodile is no longer there, as it has been accidentally awakened. Without warning, the crocodile launches an attack on Pete, making several attempts to devour both him and Kate. After getting injured, Pete retreats into the narrow confines of the cave. Together with Kate, he hides among the vast stones, ensuring the crocodile cannot reach them. Despite his efforts, the persistent crocodile attempts to smash through the barrier of stones. Sensing danger, Pete makes the difficult decision to leave Kate behind and lures the crocodile away in a different direction to distract it. Suddenly, the crocodile begins pursuing Pete, who frantically tries to hinder its move using a piece of wood. But the crocodile discards the wood and positions itself directly in front of him. Now, with immense bravery, Pete fearlessly engages in a ferocious battle with the crocodile. But during the struggle, the crocodile seizes his hand and devours some of his fingers. Undeterred by the pain, Pete retaliates by striking the crocodile with a large stone, causing it to momentarily retreat. The predator then starts heading towards the area where Kate is lying unconscious. Realizing the danger she's in, Pete shouts intensely, trying to redirect the crocodile's focus, and on top of that, he prepares himself to confront the approaching crocodile, armed with a sharp-edged weapon. At that moment, Pete realizes the grim reality that survival might be impossible as death looms before him. He then momentarily rests, leaning on a stone for support and clutching a piece of wood. However, Pete's rest is abruptly interrupted when the crocodile lunges at him, ready to devour him completely. Following this, Pete swiftly positions the sharp-edged wood over the crocodile's mouth, preventing it from devouring him. Against all odds, he manages to survive due to the protective stone. Eventually, the relentless crocodile succumbs to its fate as Pete successfully kills the dangerous creature. And with the danger now eliminated, Pete carries Kate out of the cave where they encounter other members of the boat. Additionally, there's also a rescue team eagerly awaiting their arrival. In the end, Kate's life is saved as she receives timely first aid. The thrilling account of how a Taurus conquers the crocodile is featured in the newspaper, marking the end of the movie. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.